Hello and welcome to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day today. For the video here on YouTube today, I'd like to talk about motion and movement in jewellery. And I don't just mean whereby the jewellery is physically jointed, for instance, uh, as you would have in a rosary linked chain, but where you can inspire movement of the eye by using angles and forms and shapes, and also jointed jewellery, tassels and the such. So what I want to do first of all is just give you a quick look at some of the bits I've got on the board and talk about how movement is included in the design. So we have some very obvious examples of movement in jewellery. So for instance, you've got a chain with a charm on the bottom, which inspires movement because it is a very physical piece of jewellery. This full chain drop heart not only has the movement whereby the chain is physically moving around, which is really, really pretty. This is coming up as a masterclass in a few weeks. But you've also got movement inspired by the weaving on the wires and also the coils adding the interest to the eye. So your eye is drawn not just to the movement of the chain, but the form itself and the shapes in the jewellery. You've also got very obvious movement in jewellery where you've got jointed sections and also where se segments of the jewellery are mobile. In this piece, you've got quite a lot going on because you've got an interesting contrast of colours. You've got the rich golds as against the very, very bright silvers, and you have got mobility both in the form of drops and a component that moves around. In this section, your eye is drawn not just to the tasseled section down at the bottom, but you've also got movement inspired by the contrasting colours. You've got the rich, deep, buttery golds, and then you've got an aura-coated orange as well. And to inspire movement of the eye, you've got an asymmetric design on the feature part of this design. And then you've got alternating colours as well. So you can inspire movement in jewellery in a whole host of different ways. In this piece, there's no physical movement, but your eye is drawn to move in the spiral formation, which has been a part of designs created by mankind for literally millennia. Some of the earliest carvings in stone relate to spiral forms. It's a part of nature, and we can't help but be intrigued by it. For the piece that we're going to work on together today, I've included a relatively simple design, but it's got a lot going on in terms of movement. So we obviously have a piece which physically moves down at the bottom, which is a beautiful tassel from Jesse James. You've also got the contrast caused to the eye by the weaving. So this is just a very simple three and one design. The eye also tends to follow the forms, so when I use geometric designs in jewellery, there's a reason for it. It's not just because it's pretty or because I like angles, but it does cause the eye to move around the design like a perfect painting should. In this design as well, you have open space behind the piece itself. So whether you wear that on a high necked top or over the decolletage with the long drop hanging down, there's a whole lot going on in terms of what the eye wants to do with a piece of jewellery like this. So interest in movement. The piece that we're going to learn together today is this one. Now it could be worn perhaps as a pendant. So if I just yoink this one out of the way for a second. Part of the interest is that you have open spaces through which skin or clothing indeed could be seen. So that's a very, very pretty, but really simple and very achievable piece, which could also be made into earrings. I like earrings that drop down and the movement certainly does draw the eye. So we're going to work on creating this piece together today. And I'm also going to show you a couple of different tassels that you might use in this one. So in just a second, we're going to work on this piece together. These come from Jesse James Beads in one of the beautiful Magical Mystery bead boxes from last year. But a lot of the beads blend that come through, bead blends rather that come through from Jesse James do include tassels and they are all absolutely gorgeous. Now, if you don't have any purpose made tassels, the tassels that you get on the end of gemstone strands on occasion can be really a little bit improved by the addition of a tiny scroll of wire work. So these are two black tassels cut from the end of a strand of spinel that I've had hanging around for a couple of months. 
and I've just added on a little bit of hot copper wire with coils on either end just to give them a slightly higher end appearance. You could obviously also trim those to a much finer length or you could invest in a tassel maker. It's entirely up to you. So this is the design that we're going to make together today and I'm going to add in one of these really beautiful silver colourway and bright gorgeous sensual red to go with it. So if I pop that up in the corner for now, it is not a difficult design to work up. I've got two lengths here of your one millimetre or 18 gauge wire. There's one which is about five inches in length and one which is about 10 inches in length, give or take. And we're going to work with both of these today alongside some finer gauge wire, which we'll bring in in a little while, which is 0.4 or 26 gauge. As ever, the first thing that we're going to do is add some heat and warmth to our wire before we commence working with it. It pays to get that nice and smooth and warm and fluid, just to ensure that you've got a nice straight line to start with. Now you may notice if I rotate this wire around that not only is it slightly curved, it's slightly bendy in the middle there. There's some little kinks which just need to be ironed out. A couple of ways you can overcome that. What I like to do is just allow my finger to run underneath that so that it goes onto a curve before bringing it back to straight and you will improve most of those very small deviations or you can pop that through a wire straightener tool if you have one or what you could do also is just hammer this lightly when we've put those first couple of angles in. So my shorter length of wire again is around about the five inch length and what we're going to do is find the centre and put a nice deep V shape in there to begin with. Now what you can do to get that a little bit sharper is just close that closer than you need it to be and when you open that out you'll find that your angles are just slightly neater and tidier. So it's entirely up to you what kind of angle you choose. If you're making them as earrings you'd need to make sure that your angles were very very similar so that they looked pretty close to being an equal and opposite pair. That's pretty good, I'm quite happy with that. So the second piece of wire we're going to again need to find the centre just going to straighten up that little kink on the end there last quick little bit of warmth through there find the middle and this section is about nine or ten inches in length and i'm just going to close that further than i need to to begin with and then just open that back out slightly and pop those two sections together so my outer angle is slightly larger than the inner that's not a problem at all we'll just quickly push that in and get those two line up now the inner section, we're going to put the bends in first. So I'm going to make this as if I was making a pair of earrings, which means I need to get that angle in the same position on that wire as I did on the first side. So I'm just going to grip a hold of that like so. Pop a bend over. It's a definite bend, but it's not really, really hard just yet. We can make that perfect when we're ready. I'm just going to check that for size. That looks pretty decent. You could use a marker pen and get that exact if you wish to. A little bit of a, a cheaty way of getting those two angles at the same position is to close up all the way, pop the pliers in underneath so that you know that those two bends are occurring in the same position before opening that out again. Of course, you will then have to make sure that it is the same angle that you had before so that it fits inside the other piece. So that's not too far off. I'm reasonably happy with that. As I say, you can measure use a marker pen entirely up to you so that's my first angle done what we're going to do now is make sure that we get those angles matching because I want to make this as earrings rather than as uh, an individual pendant so that just needs to be slightly wider and bring that slightly down that looks okay to me so the next angle that we need to make will be on the larger length or the longer length rather of those two pieces of wire and I just want that to wrap around the outside on both sides. I'm just going to bring that back because it's a slightly more open angle. You can flip that over whichever way works best for you. And then we're just going to hold that all together and see if that matches up with the other piece. It's close enough for me to work for until the next section. So what we're going to do is add in a little bit of residual strength to these angles once we've made sure that we're exactly happy with them. So that matches up nicely. 
This one I think is slightly out. Yep, so I'm just going to draw that in ever so slightly until they match up. Now it's slightly less precise than the geometric drop pendant we made last week. That looks pretty good to me. Now at this juncture you could bring in a block and hammer and just make these nice and firm up to about here. So all the way down on the lower V section and a little bit up at the top. What I'm going to do just for expediency is just open and close my flat facing pliers on this piece. And you'll notice I'm not pressing down where the wires cross over. And that's just going to put enough residual strength into it that it will hold its form as I am weaving. Doesn't really matter if we put a little bit of tool marking on the wire. I am working today with round raw copper, which is really beautiful. You can buff out the tool marks if you like. I actually quite like the tool marks in copper, especially if I'm going to be applying a light hammering. So that will now be just a little bit more rigid as we're adding the wire to the design which makes it a woven effect. So I'm just going to close those two inner ones ever so slightly and again check that that fits against the other piece we're working with. So you can use virtually any tassel or dangle or anything that catches the eye, even a very very simple bead or charm on a wrapped loop will work, something that just causes a little bit of movement when your piece of jewellery is in wear. Now I'm working with raw copper which takes the hammering really really beautifully. If you're working with any other colour coated copper you may just cause interruption to the surface coating. So do have a go with raw copper, it's an absolutely wonderful material to work with and once you get the hang of a light touch when you're hammering do indeed go for your colour coated coppers or up your game and go for your precious metals. It's a beautiful design to work with and relatively simple. So the next thing we're going to do after you've hammered your design if you choose to or just om nom it with the pliers as I did is introduce your section down at the bottom and that goes on to the outer of your angular shapes. So I'm just going to allow that to sit right down at the bottom and check that your angles have allowed you to just sit that neatly into position. So that looks pretty decent to me. You can obviously take a little bit more time to make that exacting to your level of obsessiveness about neatness and corners and the such. I'm just going to refine that ever so slightly to open that up. I really, really like the way this crosses over and how you have that open section in the middle. You could, of course, fill it with beads if you wanted to, but I like the openness on this one. The next wire that we're going to add in is 0.4 millimeter gauge, which is equivalent to 26 gauge wire. And what we're going to do is remove the outer longer wire for a second and start by wrapping from the center of your finer gauge wire we're going to wrap three times on one side at the base and three times on the other side at the base. Now how those wires cross over it really doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is just wrap this three times on the one side so I've got two little visible wraps and then a third little visible wrap. I'm just going to get that nice and neat and tidy and push it down to the base of that V. Give that a little bit of a squish if you need to. And then I'm just going to rotate this around gently so that I can wrap three times on the other side as well. If you can hear the wire on the desk, I'm very sorry about that. So what I'm going to do is now wrap three times on the opposite side to where I began with. So I've got three visible wraps. Give that a bit of a tidy. Almost picked up my flush cutters by mistake then. That's not how you tidy wires. So you can see that we have three wraps on either side and then a tail of wire coming away in each direction. And I've set this in the middle of the wire, the middle of the finer gauge wire, because it just makes life ever so slightly easier. Now the next part, what we need to do, you can see my finer gauge wire is coming underneath that inner frame on the right hand side. It's going over the top on the left hand side. So what I need to do is take the finer tail on the right through and underneath. Basically so that your finer gauge wire comes underneath the inner frame and also underneath the outer frame. What we're going to do now is just very gently curve up the ends of that inner wire and I'm going to wrap once around both the outer frame and the inner frame and I'm going to do that by pushing the next leading edge of that wire through and drawing that all the way around. Now where the wire needs to come next you can either take the loop around the top here so that it comes up in between the inner and the outer 
or you can cheat. And this is the bit that I love. What we're going to do is we're going to take the loop around the section of wire that comes up, it's the inner framework, and it comes up, it crosses over to the left from the right. So I'm going to wrap once, twice, three times, push that down so it's nice and neat. So we've got three wraps around just the inner, and I'm going to push that all the way around so that we can get a wrap that encompasses both the outer frame and the inner frame. And then I'm going to take that loop again and just hook it over the end so that the wire continues to now wrap around the inner frame wire only. So it's one and two and three around the inner frame wire. Get that weaving nice and neat and tidy. Push the leading edge down through the center of that diamond shape. Draw that all the way around. Make sure your weaving is nice and tidy. And then we're going to go for three wraps around just the inner frame. One and two and three. And then take the tail through. Make sure your weaving's neat and tidy. If you do a misfire, as I think I have done now, I'm too far away from the camera, from the weaving to tell. If you put four wraps around the inner frame by mistake, I don't think really it's a massive problem. If you want to undo it, you absolutely can. It's entirely up to you. I think I've probably gone for one too many there, to be honest. So again, I'm going to wrap three times around the inner before pushing the wire through and down and then we've got one wrap around both of them and I'm going to continue that all the way up to the next angle and finish off with three wraps just above that inner wire frame joint. I'm then going to do exactly the same thing on the other side and we'll reconvene in a moment. So I've just taken a couple of minutes to do some three and one weaving up the lower sides of the V shape that we've created. And I finished off by wrapping three times around the inner frame wire, just as the inner frame starts to edge slightly inwards. If you'd like to draw me down at the board, I'll show you exactly what I mean. So we've woven on both sides with a three and one with the continuous winding being on the inner of those two frame wires. And you can see already that we're starting to see some differences in shape and form. So the next thing that we're going to do is trim away down at the lower section or the inner frame wire. And I'm going to take that to just a very small amount past the outer frame on both sides. I'm trying to keep it as symmetrical as possible. So the things to look out for when you're forming and trimming is that your angles match and that if you are making earrings, the angles match on both of those. So let's just pop that over the top. We could perhaps bring those angles in ever so slightly, and it's relatively quick and simple just to tidy those up. Now you'll notice that my inner frame wires are sitting over the top of the outer frame wires. If that hasn't quite gone to plan for you, then you can very gently open up the outer frame wire, like so, and just allow those inner frame wires to be sitting over the surface. As to the wires at the back, if one crosses, if you're making them as earrings and one crosses with the leftmost over the top, then it's ideal that you make them in a mirror image and on the other side, the rightmost wire crosses over the top. At the end of the day, once we've popped a wrapped loop in, you probably won't even be able to differentiate. So it's not a major issue. It's just if you do have a little bit of perfection in mind. So once we're happy with all those angles, you may have hammered this ever so lightly earlier to keep it in position. Let's just clear that board a second. The next thing that we're going to do is to turn one of these long lengths of wire at the back, the outer frame wire, into an upright. Now on my already made pendant or earring, it was the one that came from the right, became the upright. So on this one, it's going to be the one that comes from the left. Before you make that bend, it's advisable to just check that you have all of your angles in a line. So I just use a piece of wire or a straight edge to make sure that a straight line passes between the Vs we made at the bottom, through the point where the inner frame wires cross over, through the point where the outer frame wires cross over. So I'm quite happy with how that is. And we're just going to turn that left side outer frame wire into an upright for now. 
and then what we're going to do is pop those pliers very closely behind the angle we've just made like so and create a right angle coming over to the nine o'clock position in a minute we're going to wrap that all together to make a nice neat wrapped loop up at the top there so I think what we'll do next is just turn these short edges over so we don't catch our hands when we're creating that wrapped loop and this just needs a little bit of pinch power so make sure your angles are all where you want them to be what I'm going to do is pinch the whole assembly quite firmly use my pliers to just put a right angle on that and the same on the other side like so before just checking that I haven't accidentally shortened any of these angles made anything sit too closely together or too far apart if you need to you can just refine that slightly by opening it out before making sure again that everything sits where you want it to the next thing we're going to do is take those two sticky uppy parts and turn them back on the same piece of wire that they came from now you may need to trim that down slightly what I'm doing here is I'm using the pinch method so I'm using my forefinger and thumb just to hold the assembly all together whilst I just turn those wires over and get them to sit immediately behind the same wire that they came from now if I just turn this sideways you should be able to see that that's quite long and I can trim just a little bit of that away now looking twice and trimming once here just controlling that tail as it drops and what that means is I can turn that last little bit of tail over get it to crimp down onto itself so if I just flip this on its side you should be able to see that the wire has traveled around the opposite side and is just gripping gently back on itself now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side and again you can see we can take just a tiny amount of wire off here those pieces of wire are very annoying if they uh, go on the floor so do try and catch them before they get there and I'm just going to control that now and bring it back down so that it sits behind itself and if I flip the assembly up the correct way you can see where we are at with the process so all that remains now is to create a little wrapped loop up at the top when you're creating a wrapped loop with wire this is one millimeter or 18 gauge what can happen is when you start turning the wrapping section so we've got a neck section and a wrapping section it will start to pull the wire that you don't want to get pulled into the design one of the ways that you can prevent this is by gripping that wire firmly when you make your initial bend over the top so I'm going to do this in as slow-mo as I can but by gripping the wire with my pliers here on the right hand side I prevented this section of wire from being pulled around that central section another way you can do this is by using a second pair of pliers this is always good fun when you're not used to using your left hand for such things what I'm going to do here is grip very very firmly over the two shoulder wires and just draw that tail around a little bit until I get that under control and you can see we've now created that very firm loop we've preserved the angles and we've preserved most importantly this side of the wire here so that that doesn't get shortened you can then create a second loop by hand and then we're just going to trim away that excess on the back of the design and do need to just tidy that up slightly and try to get those sitting as flat as possible and that's just a case of opening and closing your pliers until it meets your aesthetic values so let's just put those two down side by side I've gone for two wraps using the wire that came from the side which means that we need to now put a loop and just use a single wrap of wire at the top to complete that loop so I'm going to turn a sideways bend on that ups, up section, the upright wire, like so. And I'm just using the very tip of my pliers so that there's a tiny amount of space up at the top before bringing my round nose pliers in and looping that wire around, like so. So you can obviously take a little bit more time to make sure that that loop is exactly the same as your first loop less important on a pendant because obviously you're just making the one but kind of important on a pair of matched earrings so i'm just going to take that wire across the back now and then trim away the excess cautiously making sure i am trimming the correct bit only 
flip that back down into position tighten up the coil and then refine any angles if you need to so i'm just going to tighten that up a little bit more and pop these down on the board now this they're, they're not 100 percent perfect you can obviously spend a little bit more time but all that remains now is to add in a pair of ear wires and you've got yourself a pair of earrings i didn't exactly match those up but they're close enough size wise you can see that probably i could have hammered that a little bit more to get some more structural integrity into them but you can see that the eye is drawn to the weaving the open spaces and the movement so i'm just going to refine those angles ever so slightly add some ear wires and i'll look forward to seeing you here again very soon on the gem hawks youtube channel have yourself a beautiful day bye for now